towards the city centre, where for a while the clubs kept them happy. Now, the club scene in many of Britain's major cities is in turmoil. Violence, drugs and gun-toting gangs have forced many clubs to review their membership policies, while at Manchester's Hacienda to close their doors. Reportage followed a group of ravers in search of a good time and to find out what's driving them out of the big cities again. I think that the scene has moved on. Manchester is dead. There's, there's other places to go to. There's the whole of the northwest, they've all got good clubs. And the door policies aren't as bad. There's no way young people would ever be stopped from having a good time. Because where there's a will, there's a way. We get together, we just be in a pub or whatever, and we say, let's go somewhere else. We find the flyer, something happening in Stoke, Leeds, Nottingham, get it together, sort out the cars, and go. This petrol station is the Ravers' last meeting point before they hit the motorway. Tonight's chosen destination is Stoke, about 50 miles from Manchester. Clubbers have converged from all over Britain to come to Shelley's Laser Dome. A thousand people queue up for an hour to get in. Everyone just gets on and uh, you meet people from all over the place and the music's kicking and uh, there's never any trouble. I don't think it's like sort of deliberately moved out of the city centres. I think it's it's just because the authorities are too heavy in like Manchester and London and Birmingham and all that. You know, it's got to be the smaller towns. And as soon as they clamp down in Stoke, I'm sure it'll move on somewhere else. You know what I mean? There's no stopping it. From glitter balls to techno raves, clubs like this are now bringing in top DJs and PAs, like Enjoy from Essex. Enjoy are constantly touring the rave circuit, and their new single, Adrenaline, is riding high in the top 30. We just want good response from the crowd, and we always get it up here, and we always tend to get it in the smaller clubs where there's a good, tight little atmosphere. Uh, well, there's a lot of people from Manchester and all other cities, and you know? uh, DJs giving shout outs. And there's no like, bad vibes at all. Everyone's just down together. Really sweet. But the rave doesn't end when Shelley's closes. The convoy of clubbers hits the road in search of another party. It's 3.30 in the morning and the rave goes on. But this is no club. The club's closed more than an hour ago. This is nuts of a service station, just off the M6. <laughs> We're always party. It started off in fields. We can go back to fields if that's what it takes. The police came, they saw, and then left. There was no trouble at any point during the night. Well, it just shows that the party movement's still alive. You know, everyone's still into it. It's not going to stop. It just keeps going. That's from Manchester, recently wowed the Sugar Cube's hometown of Reykjavik, where they were joined on stage by Bjork herself, performing Oops, one of two songs she's written the words for on the new album, XL. <laughs> I was uh, saying goodbye to the friends I stayed with in London and I hold my uh, suitcase like this and my phone rang and it was them from Manchester and I had a, a Apex ticket to Iceland about an hour later and they said could you come over to Manchester and do some tracks and I said give me 30 minutes to think about it and, <laughs> and in five minutes I called the air company and said you just have to change my ticket. It's a question of life and death, and, and, and then I just came on. Synthesizer programmers Martin Price and Graham Massey and DJs Andy Barker and Darren Partington first met through Martin's Eastern Block record shop. 808 State's breakthrough came with the instrumental Pacific State. We didn't set off to be a band like we are now, you know, promoting ourselves through, you know, the boy next door freezes his ass off in Iceland. You know, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't do it like that. We just made music, and originally we were in the DJ box and had nothing to do with the stage or anything like that. And we found it pretty difficult, trans, you know, making the transition from one to the other. And that's only because the Brit British music business is so many light years behind. You know, they can't let you do it the way you want to. In Your Face, the first single from the new album, made a sizable dent in the top 20 earlier this year.
just as fellow northerners, the KLF, were sitting at the top of the charts. 808 State are keen KLF fans and see their joint success as a refreshing development in the British music scene. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. Vengeance of doo, doo definitely, <laughs> in a big way. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, but, I'd, rather, I'd rather see KLF or, or the Justifieds or whatever there with something that you know is a piece of pretentious pop and it's been planned and everything, rather than see somebody like Cliff who's doing it and taking it seriously. You know, I shouldn't to see that any day. No great brunch, KLF. <laughs> New Order's Bernard Sumner also appears on the new album, providing both lyrics and vocals on the song Spanish Heart. According to 808 State, he's been a fan of theirs all along. Really, he's putting his money where his mouth is. He's the first sort of Manchester guy, you know, up there to, to turn around and say, well, 808 State, yeah, they are doing something for the dance scene in Manchester. And Manchester people and, and Bernard himself are proud of that fact now. They never were. It was a hard fight because Manchester's a lazy place and it's they never support you. It takes you sort of two and a half years to break through all, you know, all the bitching and backbiting, which people never see. But we're here now. It's basically been a case of eight weeks later said, we're not going to go away. Thank you. Rap, rap,